Good morning. And today's readings are in the Old Testament. A couple weeks ago I said Psalms was in the New Testament. <laughs> I misspoke. I don't know what made me say that, but uh, Psalms is definitely in the Old Testament. Starts on Psalms 46, 1 to 3. God is a refuge and strength, an ever-present help in trouble. Therefore we will not fear through the earth give away and the mountains fall into the heart of the sea. Though its waters roar and foam and the mountains quake with their surging. Second reading of the Psalms 139, 7 to 10. Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to heavens, are you there? If I make my bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me, your right hand will hold me fast. And last reading is Jeremiah 23, verse 23 to 24. Am I only a God nearby, declares the Lord, and not a God far away? Can anyone hide in secret places so that I cannot see them, declares the Lord. Do not I fill heaven and earth, declares the Lord. This and today's reading. Will we be in an attitude of prayer? Dear Heavenly Father, I just pray that you would just speak through me. Give me the words to say so that we can hear what you have to say, Lord. Take your words, meditate on them, and then go out and live them. Help us to be the light in the world that you call us to be each and every day of our lives. This we pray in your heavenly name. Amen. So before I jump into this morning's sermon, I would like to do a little experiment. Are we up for an experiment this morning? Mm. <laughs> well, don't worry. You don't have to do anything strenuous. All you have to do is just sit there. All right, can you do that? Sit there and breathe. Now, breathing's not hard, correct? No. So all we're going to do together is we're going to breathe in through our nose and out through our mouth. Again, in through our nose, out through your mouth. One more time. In through your nose, and out through your mouth. Very good. Now, what did you breathe in and out? Air, right. But how do you know it was air? You can't see air. You can't, you can't taste air air, and to a certain extent, you can't reach out and grab air. So how do you even know that air exists? How do you know air exists? Give me some proof to know that air exists. Ralph, when the wind blows, okay? Yep, you jumped my gun. Don't get there yet. You are right, though. <laughs> I knew somebody was going to do it today. <laughs> but what are some other reasons? Maybe when we blow up a balloon, you can see the air inside the balloon. The balloon inflates. When you talk, certain syllables that we say, you can feel the puff of air on your lips as the word comes out. Or when you blow out a candle, you can see the effects of the wind blowing the candle out. And these are all proof that air exists. But the most important, which Eli pointed out, is the fact that we're all alive. Without air, we would not be alive. We need air to breathe and live. Now, air may exist just about everywhere, but even air has a limit. If you don't believe me, you can take a walk after church today down to Leaser Lake. Jump into the lake. Swim out to the middle of the lake. Dive down under the water and then take a deep breath of air. What's going to happen? You drown. You could, or you come up coughing all the water that you just swallowed. Or you could hop on a rocket, zip out to space, fly to the moon, land, jump out of your spaceship, and take a breath of air. 
what would happen? You'd freeze, you'd suffocate. So the point is, is that every creature and every object, including air, has a limit. Everything has a limit except God. As our God is omnipresent. How many of you have ever heard the word omnipresent before? Raise your hand. Over the last month, we've been talking about the three omnis, that God is omnipotent, meaning all-powerful, that God is omniscient, meaning all-knowing. And today, we're going to talk about God's omnipresence, meaning what? I didn't hear any of that. What? <laughs> Present everywhere. That's right. So what does this tell us about God? Well, according to A.W. Tozer, omnipresence means that God is, is all present. God is close to, because that's what the word means, close to, near to, everywhere. He's near to everything, everyone. And we can see the proof of this in our text this morning that we're going to focus on, which is Psalm 139, excuse me, beginning at verse 7. So if you want to open your Bibles and you want to follow along, go to Psalm 139, Verse 7. And it's here that we read, Where can I go from your spirit? Where can I flee from your presence? If I go up to the heavens, you are there. If I go down to the bed in the depths, you are there. If I rise on the wings of the dawn, if I settle on the far side of the sea, even there your hand will guide me. Your right hand will hold me fast. Now, what we see in this text is four sets of directions. In fact, I relate it a lot to a compass because our first direction is heaven, which is up. So that would be north. And then if we go down to the bed in the depths, which is represents hell, that would be south. Then if we rise on the wings of the dawn, which represents daybreak, where the sun rises every day, which is where? In the east. And if I settle on the far side of the sea, talking about the Mediterranean Sea, that is located in the west. So there you have it, north, south, and I'm going to get this wrong, east, west, because it's probably backwards. But the point is, is that God is present in all directions, as our God is present everywhere. Now, as humans, this may be a little hard for us to wrap our minds around completely, because we think of things in geographic locations and astronomically, or we think of things in measurements and sizes and miles and meters and inches. So we almost have to push that aside and not put that same standard on God because God is not limited as he's omnipresent. St. Augustine once wrote when it came to God's omnipresence, he said this, that part of God is not in one place while a different part of God is in another place. He is not extended through space by size that half of him should be in this half of the world over here and another half of him is in this part of the world over here. No, God is wholly present in the whole of it. Unconfined to any one place, he is himself everywhere, holy. In other words, God contains space, so that space is in God. As Jeremiah 23, 24 tells us, do not I fill the heaven and earth? See, God is infinite, that he swallows up all of space. Let me put it this way. Tra take our trip back down to Leaser Lake together. But this time, we're going to take a bucket with us. And we'll go out again to the middle of the lake, and we'll take a bucket and we'll dip it into the water and push it down deep. 
Now the bucket will fill up with water, but all around that bucket is the lake. That lake represents God, as he's all around us, even in us. But let's be more specific by going back to our compass and looking at the fact that God is present at different points, holy, beginning with heaven. And we're going to take a look at a couple of verses that point to this. In Psalms 97, 9, which reads, For you, Lord, are the most high over all the earth. You are exalted far above all gods. We also see in Psalm 123, 1, which reads, I lift up my eyes to you, to you who sit enthroned in heaven. Then we jump all the way to the end of the Bible in Revelation chapter 4, verse 2, which reads, At once I was in the spirit, and there before me was a throne in heaven with someone sitting on it. What all these scriptures are saying is that our God is high and lifted up. There is no one or nothing higher than our God. No ruler, no king, no government is higher than God. God sits upon his throne and rules over all his creation. He is at the top of the command, of the chain of command. So instead of feeling discouraged when we watch the news or we read articles in the paper or we see stuff online and we see all these evil things happening in our world. Instead of looking at that stuff from a horizontal perspective, which in the end will only bring discouragement, be encouraged by looking at everything from a vertical perspective. Because our God is still in control. Our God is ruler over all. So far we have said that God is present everywhere, which means that he is not just present in heaven alone fully, but that he's also present in hell. We see proof of this in Revelation 14.10, which reads, They too will drink the wine of God's fury, which has been poured full strength into the cup of his wrath. They will be tormented with burning sulfur in the presence of the holy angels and of the Lamb. Now, it may be hard for us to imagine that God would be in such a place as hell. Often people don't think that God is in hell because that's what hell is. They think that God's not there. But that would go against God's omnipresence because God is present everywhere, including hell. And God is there and he is pouring out his wrath upon those who have rejected him. We see more proof of this as we turn to 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verse 9, which reads, They will be punished with everlasting destruction and shut out from the presence of the Lord and from the glory of his might. Now, we just said that God will be present in hell. So how can he, they be, these people be shut out? Well, it's saying that God's goodness that we talked about in our song today, God's goodness is running after, running after me, that goodness will stop completely, and they will feel no hope, no joy, no peace. Because this isn't only for when you're here on earth. This isn't only for the ones that believe, but as we see in Matthew 5.45, he causes his son to rise on the evil and the good and sends rain on the righteous and the unrighteous. So everybody gets to experience God's goodness here on earth, but one day that will stop completely for those who have rejected God. I can't imagine that day for people. In fact, I feel pity for those that don't put their faith in God. And I hope and pray that one day they will see the truth. But thankfully, we as Christians can find comfort in God's great mercy. 
as God provided a way for us to be reconnected to God, and that was through the loving sacrifice of Jesus Christ who took our place on the cross and had God's wrath poured out on him. Now, I understand that nobody likes to talk about hell because it's all doom and gloom. But the point is, it's reality for some people. It exists. And one day, all of us will stand before the Lord and will be judged. And we will either go to live with God in eternity, full of peace and joy, or we will go to hell and live in everlasting torment, which is devastating news. Now, I understand I'm basically preaching to the choir here this morning when it comes to salvation. As I believe all of us here, I can't speak for everyone, but I believe we are all saved. However, there may be somebody here this morning that's either sitting on the fence or has rejected God altogether. I just, I would plead with you. Please keep seeking after God because there's more proof out there that God actually exists. And I don't want to see you put in eternal torment. I just don't want to see that. I don't want to see that for anybody. So please make that decision to follow God because you will truly find peace joy, and hope. You will truly be transformed. And I think we could go around the room and everybody could tell their different individual stories. So please, give this a second thought. So far, we said that God is everywhere. He is present in the highest of highs in heaven and present in the lowest of lows in hell. But God is also near. I've often said this in my prayers. I often thanked God for not just being a God that sits up in heaven and does absolutely nothing but watch his creation just go about, but that he's a God that's involved. In fact, how many of you know right now that God's with you, that he's sitting right next to you this morning? His presence is all around us. His presence is here right now. Just like the illustration of the bucket in the ocean I used earlier, as we said before, God is the ocean and you are the bucket. God is fully present in your life. He knows all about you. In fact, God knows you better than you know yourself. He knows you're coming and going. He knows what you do during the day and what you do during the night. He knows all about you. God is present with you everywhere you go. He's present in your coming and going, present in your day-to-day activities, present in your times of joy, and also present in your times of despair. One verse that always I usually read at funerals is Psalm 23, verse 4, which reads, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Maybe there's someone here this morning who finds himself going through one of the most difficult times in their lives. You're overwhelmed with the things coming at you and you feel like you're in battle and you're down in the trenches fighting this battle, trying to overcome and at times you don't know which way is up. I want to reassure you that God is with you in these trenches. He's helping you to fight this battle. As Psalm 46, 1 reminds us, God is our refuge and strength 
and ever-present help in trouble. God is our ever-present help, even when it seems like the world is against you and you are all alone. God is with you. We see this in Hebrews 13.5. These words are some of the most comforting words. Never will I leave you. Never will I forsake you. These are words that, honestly, we should write down and memorize because in those times where we're just getting punched left and right by the world around us where it just seems overwhelming and we don't know if we can go on anymore, God will never leave us. God will never forsake us. This is a promise from God himself to us. That God will all be with you. He will never abandon you. Maybe that's a hard concept for you to understand because you have been abandoned in life. Maybe that was through a marriage. Maybe that was through a father thing when you're a child, we've all been, to a certain extent, abandoned at one point in time. But God will never do that. He promises that, and God can't lie. As God is always the same yesterday, today, and forever. So if you have ever been hurt, I'm sorry. But I can reassure you that God will never, ever harm you. Something else I want to mention about God's nearness is the fact that we can't hide from God. We can't hide from him. Maybe have rejected God at some point in our lives where we run away from God. And we can see this in the story of uh, Jonah. Jonah was told to go to the Ninevites. And what did he do? He ran away. God was with him wherever he went. He was near him. Many people in our world today run away from God because it may not fit with their lifestyle that they want to live. It may not go with the life that they seek after. And so they run the other way. But God is still with them as well. They may not see him. They may reject him completely. But God is still there. So in closing, this morning, we took a look at God's omnipresence. As God is fully present everywhere. Fully present in heaven, fully present in hell, and fully present in each and every one of our lives. So as we walk out that door today and go on living our day-to-day lives, be encouraged knowing that God is with you wherever you go. He will never leave you. He will never forsake you. He will be with you even in the trenches. God's presence is everywhere. So you are never alone. So I invite you this morning to take comfort in that as you go throughout this week because our God is omnipresent. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we just thank you so much for who you are. And it seems like the more and more we peel back your word and we look deeper and deeper, we discover different attributes of who you are, God. And each and every attribute brings comfort. Each and every attribute makes us feel good because you love us, you care about us, and you're always with us. And so I pray that if anybody feels alone this morning, 
or they feel like they're in the trenches fighting for their lives, Lord, help them to know that you are with them, fighting alongside of them, giving the strength to overcome these obstacles. This we pray in your heavenly name. Amen.